YouTube. How you doing? It's Tacoma Comics here with a lot of glare in my eyes. Holy cow. Um, anyway, been a while. Glad to be back here doing it. Wanted to do it right. So I've got a, <laughs> I got a nice haul from you. There's one of the guys I did my haul with. This weekend we were in Portland and we did a comic book shop tour of Portland, Oregon. Hit about six comic books. There's the other uh, member of the tribe. I hit about six comic book shops. Boys got some nice freebies. We had a good time. Got a lot of donuts. Heard the very sad news about Stan Lee while we were in a donut shop. Um, but, you know, it was uh, it was all a good time, and I thought it was a great way to celebrate the man's life to uh, go visiting comic book shops in Portland and, and buying comics. One thing I got to tell you about Portland is six different comic book shops. They all had, careful, they all had their own um, characteristic, right? Yeah. Everything was a little bit different. <laughs> all right. I uh, had a lot of family... Uh, business going on there so here we go first place we went was actually on Sunday or Saturday when we got to Portland we stayed at a place called the Hoxton which I highly suggest they got about six locations World Ride their new uh, sort of boutique hotel but they were um, really pretty cool for our family I think to stay in uh, especially since we got a decent discount on the internet um, but, um, but this place uh, Floating World Comics was right next door so it's like whoa comic book shop next door to where I'm staying can't pass that up so I uh, went in there, and they, they had you know all the basic new stuff that's out, uh, weekly comics, but they also had a nice back issue section. It wasn't too large, but they, they bundled stuff together. So I got um, Death or Glory by Rick Remender, one through five, for five bucks, which I thought was really darn good. Um, I've got like one or two of these issues. I haven't read like a solid chunk of it yet. Um, I was looking forward to it. And there you go. I grabbed it. The other one I got that I'm really excited about was Rocket Girl, um, 8 through 10. This is by uh, Amy Reeder and Brandon Montclair. And there is a big dent in there, I just realized. Uh, that was three bucks for three comics. Um, you know, I, I read issue one through six of this and then stopped because they took like a year hiatus. Uh, I obviously don't have seven, but now I've got eight, nine, and ten. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and then just a few single issues for it. Oh, this was... The only thing I got that was full price there, um, Grand Design, Second Genesis, number two. If you're not reading this and you're an X-Men fan or a comic book fan, you really should. It's just amazing work that Ed Pisker is doing on that. And if you ever read his hip-hop family tree, that was really amazing, too. Uh, just found these. I am trying to get a complete run of 1 through 19. I should say I'm trying to get another complete run because I have... Uh, three complete runs already, so I'm trying to do that again, uh, and I'm almost done now. I got to double check, but I think that that knocked it out for me. I missed this one. I had everything else one through ten plus twelve, but I never got eleven. Somehow I missed that. I love Mother Panic. I really wish that uh, they did more. With, that DC would do more with her character um, now that it's established. I think it's a great character. I grabbed the uh, DC Nation because there is a Willow Wilson interview uh, on the new Wonder Woman that she's doing in here. That comes out tomorrow, probably today by the time you read this. All right, so um, that was that. Spent the next day wandering around Portland, eating ourselves silly at amazing uh, shops. And then the last day, my wife wanted to go off and do some shopping on her own, sort of shopping that... If I or the boys were with her, I would be putting on a good face. The boys wouldn't be putting on a good face, but none of us would be enjoyable. Uh, bah, none of us would enjoy being in Nordstrom Rack that long. So she went one way, we went the other, drove across the river, and hit a whole bunch of comic book shops. First one we hit was called Bridge City Comics. Um, really nice little boutique shop uh, in a nice area of town. Um, it had... Uh, not a lot of back issues. It was mainly current stuff, but uh did find a few things that, that I'm looking for. I did not realize that this number six had come out. I've got to check with my LCS. I'm not sure uh, if I missed this or if I don't have this on order, but I mean, if you just look at the artwork, this is Mike Carey and Peter Gross. It's just a gorgeous comic. Um, this large format is kind of annoying, uh, but the, the colors and the, the tone in this is, is, is just wonderful. Really great comic. So I'm excited to have that and get another issue of that to read. Uh, 
and he had the bags and boards that fit it, which was kind of cool. Um, because I'd been missing those, it'd be kind of like jury rigging some other things. Uh, then this is another one that, that I got there that I was like, I'm not sure if I'm missing this or what. Uh, but Seventh Eternity, this is cover A and cover B. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how I missed these. I, I noticed I almost missed 11, so I've got to find out um, if they're not actually on my pull list or, or what, because that's definitely a great comic, and I'm excited to have those because I didn't know I was missing them. Um, found this one. This is a Stephanie Hans cover, so I grabbed that because I like Stephanie Hans. And then this one right here, I'm telling you all right now, A-Force is going to be a movie. Um, how do I know that? I'm making it up, but I believe it fully. Anyway, uh, G. Willow Wilson is the writer on this, and this is a uh, hip-hop homage to N.W.A. Straight Outta Compton. Um, love this cover. I'm not a massive Adam Hughes fan, the way some people are, but I like that one. So I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm getting all this correct and didn't get to a new shop yet. I might have gotten to a new shop with that last one with the A-Force. Anyway, uh, we went to Things from Another World, and it was closed. <laughs> so I have no idea what that shop was like. Uh, but it was closed uh, for inventory all day long. So we skipped it, and then we went over to Cosmic Monkey Comics, um, which is a large comic book shop. Uh, and then you, you go through it, and they've got all sorts of racks of yeah. toys and cards and comics and shelves and shelves of graphic novels. And then you kind of turn a corner, and bam, there's a massive um, back issue room. room. So that's where I spent a lot of time. Found this Miss Marvel variant that I was not aware of, actually. Um, hadn't seen this one before. Uh, this is uh, number 13 from Volume 4. It says, Divided We Stand. I think this right about the time of Civil War II, so it might be tying into that, because I know Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel were on opposite sides. Found this uh, Hamilton variant of the Backstagers Valentine edition. I have always wanted this one. Um, it was pretty uh, pretty pricey when it came out. It went it kind of, was, I think it was the limited in, in print run, um, and eight bucks, so it wasn't exactly cheap, but uh, really kind of cool. I've always wanted that one. I worked on a stage crew a lot in, in high school. I did not have acting chops, and I definitely did not and still do not have singing chops, but uh, I like to be on, on the crew setting up the stuff and, and, and all that. So I was, I was always into and around the, the theater, so the backstagers are, are the same kids who do that um, in the comic, which I thought was pretty cool. 100 Bullets, 92 and 97, 98, and there's great Dizzy Cordova cover on 99. I uh, believe I'm like two away from finishing this run now. I need issue 100 and issue 93. Then I'll have all 100 of those, which will be super cool. Uh, Baltimore, I don't know if you guys are reading this. I know it's not as popular as like the other stuff that um, Vignola does. Hellboy and, and DPRD are just massive and huge. But uh, these were two that I was missing. Um, they came out with like six miniseries based on this character Baltimore and they're all like two, three, four, five issues long and these were just two that I needed to complete that. So I picked those up as well, which is pretty cool. The next place we went to was Acme Comics. Acme Comics was a wild place. Very tiny little storefront. I think it, the guy's office or his house was in the back and I don't, I'm not trying to make fun of him at all. Because uh, he was a really nice guy, but he had a patter. He had a, a whole thing down that he kind of gave to us in a spiel that my son said it really well. It wasn't like he was trying to sell us. He wasn't trying to be like an advertisement. He just wanted to tell us about his but shop. He had to get it all out in one really long paragraph. And I don't know that I could do it justice, but it's something along the lines of we guarantee our, our, our grades. You'd have to go to... Um, You'd have to go down to California, find another shop that does that. We're the only shop in seven states, Utah, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, um, 
Colorado that, that does that. California is the next one. We actually guarantee our grades. If the grade isn't um, verified, then you can take it back for full refund. We also have 25% off, off of our 25% off of our comics. Month of November, we have 50% off of our comics um, all month long. If you can find another shop that has 50% off sale all, all month long of November, we'll give you $500 cash, no questions asked, if you can prove it with an ad or something. And he just went on like, <laughs> just on and on. Um, I had some nice stuff, nothing that I really wanted or nothing that was, I thought, within my price range, even with that half off. But uh, I just picked up these two because I don't like to leave the shop empty-handed. So this is like $3 and $2. It was like a buck fifty and a dollar twenty-five each. Um, just trying to collect all of these uh, Marvel ones with the, the guys, the characters around the outside. Those are kind of a neat set to get, so I thought I'd get that. And so that was Fallout Comics, which is pretty cool. Um... And then what was probably not the best comic shop, but the highlight of the trip in terms of hunting uh, was the next place we went to. Sorry, that was Acme Comics. This next one was Fallout Comics. You want to talk about a hard-to-find store? Uh, Yelp or Google might have it, but Google Maps just had the place, the time, and the, the location. So we went there. We get to this store. And there's a corner um, door, glass door, and it just has a tiny printout. It doesn't even say Fallout Comics. It says, if door is closed, please go around around side. So we're like, okay. Walk around to the side, past the tea shop on, on the side, and go in the tea shop. We're like, is there a comic book shop in this building? And the guy's like, I think so, but I'm not sure. And then another guy's like, yeah, you got to go around the side. You got to go up. You got to go over, and then you got to go down, down into the basement. Okay. We went around the side. <laughs> we went up. We went over. We went down. We were stuck in a stairwell with nothing, right? Just locked doors. So we went back up, back over, looked around a little bit more. This place is an old bakery, apparently, like a massive turn-of-the-century bakery, turn of previous century, not the 19th, not the uh, 20th century, turn of the 19th century, old brick building, but it's been totally refurbished. Now they're renting out different areas for like s startups and stuff. So there was like a kombucha company in there. There was a marketing firm. There was a bicycle company. Eventually we found these guys in a little factory that refurbishes or makes doors. And they had some doors in a cart they were pushed in. Like, can we help you? Going, we're looking for Fallout Comics. Oh yeah, you got... I'll just show you. Never mind. I'll just show you. So <laughs> he showed us. We went down a hallway we hadn't seen, went down the stairs, across the hall, down another flight of stairs to this very dark room in the basement with my two kids now. Like, hello? You know, and there's posters on the wall, so you know it's the right place, but you're just not sure what's going on. You hear this guy, like, you see a little glow in the corner. Hello? Yep. Yeah. I'm like, are you open? He's like, oh, yeah. Hi. Um... We're usually only open weekends and weekday by appointment. I'm like, oh, we didn't know that. Is it okay if we look around? He's like, yeah. Flicks a light switch, lights come on. He was at a computer um, just trying to hit eBay to pick up Stan Lee stuff because uh, the Stan Lee news had broken earlier that day. Uh, so he's trying to snag what he could before the prices went through the roof. But uh, he opened up, and then you turn around, you look, and it's like this massive basement warehouse full of, of comic books. So... Tons of back issues. Uh, it's getting pretty tired at that point. Didn't want to spend forever looking. But then he had like about 12 long boxes of runs, like prepackaged, so you didn't have to flip through individual comics, which made it kind of quicker. Um, and I got a whole bunch of different ones. I was going to put some back. I was going to take some. I was trying to decide do I want this? Do I already have three of these issues. Do I need to get triples of those or doubles of those just to get the other four? Uh, but then I hit upon this. I found Young Avengers 1 through 12 complete set, first run by uh, Heinberg and Chung um, and Johnny Dell, I guess that is, on lettering or, or ink, not sure. And uh, yeah, it was 10 bucks. And I figured, hey, that's, um, you know, issue one, issue six can go for 10, 15, 20 dollars each. Uh, you know, and, and issue one is kind of established. Issue, issue six is still a. Uh, a bit of a spec issue, so I thought that was really cool to get that entire set for 10 bucks. I was really excited. At the same time, he offered my kids um, two free comics each from the dollar bin. Let's let them choose. Uh, he said, any kids that come in get two free dollar comics. So I'm like, 
That's cool. Uh, one of my sons snagged up some Novas because he loves Nova. Nova's his favorite character. So he'll grab any Nova that he can. And the other son didn't seem too interested. Uh, he likes to draw more than he likes to read, but he picked up a Scarlet Witch that looked pretty cool. It's a darn cool cover, actually. I, I kind of dig that. So thought that was pretty cool. Um, all the artwork on that Scarlet Witch is really good. I've shown off a few of those earlier. Uh, and then um, on my way out the door, there was one rack in this stairwell. I saw this. I didn't realize that it was the coloring book. I just saw a chew, and I saw I kind of grabbed it, looked at it. And I saw that it was a coloring book, so I was about to put it back because I'm not really into coloring books, even if they're kind of cool adult ones for, like, comics you read. The guy's like, oh, just take that. Okay. So he gave me a, a chew coloring book, which I thought was pretty phenomenal um, to, to get a free uh, coloring book that had $10 price tag on. So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Uh, and then finally, we were... Uh, we were going to go. Um, we were in a donut shop, and uh, I'm so sorry, we're in a donut shop. We had we went to this one, and I was getting some text from my wife, and she's like, "Are you going to Excalibur Comics?" And I said, "I wasn't really planning on it. We were kind of done. I thought you were done." And, and she said, uh, pay "Well, I'm reading my out. Kindle, and I'm having a donut and in some other see. shop or a pastry, you know, a chai latte. Actually, she was having. Um, she's like, "Why don't you go to Excalibur and then meet me here in half an hour?" Okay. When it's Excalibur, and oh my gosh, am I glad I went there. Um, this was a large shop uh, all around the side, around the, the walls on the side. They had new issues on one side. The other side was all graphic novels. But then in the middle was more back issues than maybe all the other shops combined. I mean, just, just rows and rows and rows. And the most meticulously sorted back issues that I found anywhere. Absolutely beautifully sorted. Um by title and volume and, and everything um, and all the X stuff together any X-Men series so like classic X-Men wasn't under C which I saw in some shops and stuff like that it was all under X which is the way it should be uh, so that was pretty cool um, and her prices were not great but uh, were pretty decent plus she was just really darn cool um, lady said her family had owned the shop since 1974 you know she'd been running it for a while uh, a news crew had just been there or had called up earlier and was coming in later to do an interview with her about Stan Lee. So I assume that it's like a big store in the community, um, well-known at least. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, but then I, I just got a bunch of really cool comics. So I grabbed um, I grabbed these to finish out that Miss Marvel run that I started earlier in the day. So I, now I think I have a full uh, set of – another full set of 1 through 19. Uh which is pretty cool. Got this one. I had been wanting this one for a while. This is a 1 in 25 variant. And I, the life of me, I can't remember the artist. And that's really shoddy of me for doing doing this. Um, it's not Jenny Frizen. It's Joelle Jones, I believe. Uh, but I could be totally 100% wrong. So I'm really going to be quiet now since I'm not totally sure. But there is a variant that I did not have to number 12. Uh, speaking of G. Willow Wilson... I went ahead and grabbed Air because I had not read this before. This was her first or second comic that she did for DC. Um, so I'll probably get a trade people back the rest of that, but I wanted to get that. Uh, so I'm not sure what this is. Uh, according to the barcode, this would be the fifth printing, but there's nothing inside that says this is a fifth printing. I don't know if... Um, Aftershock does its, its barcodes differently than DC and Marvel. Um, but usually if it is, uh, oh, you know what? It is. It does say. We looked inside and missed that, so never mind. Fifth printing cover, it says it right there. So there's the mystery for that cleared up. That is the fifth printing. I thought it was, um, but we couldn't find it at the time. So I don't know if that's a low print run or something, but that was five bucks, which for fifth printing is a little too much. But made up for the fact that I got first printing for five bucks as well. Um, I used to have two of these. I gave one away. Uh, I think Funk Off won it in my 100 subscriber contest. Uh, so glad to get another one of those back. Um, pick this up. Uh, if you've seen this actual cover, go Google it if you haven't, if you're over 18. Um, it's really pretty hysterical. Um, 
<laughs> really, really funny. Everybody's like, what's Scotty Young going to bring to the, you know, triple X sex criminals coverage, but came up with some, something good. Uh, I grabbed the regular one to actually read, because uh, I like to read that comic. Imperial Cadet, I grabbed this. Uh, I saw Solo and loved it. Absolutely loved the movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I suggest watching it. The ending was amazing. Just blew my mind. Um, little appearance of somebody that was unexpected. But this is supposed to be like the three years that he was in the Academy that they kind of glossed over in the movie. So I heard it was a good read. I'm going to try that out. Grabbed up 112 just because I'm closing in on my Chris Claremont run. Um, that was pretty shoddy condition, pretty cheap. This one was, was pretty nice. Uh, X-Men 140. I didn't have this one either. Uh, and look, hey, <laughs> the Wendigo's back. Fortunately, it's not the first appearance of the Wendigo. Uh, <laughs> that would be funny. Um, it was 13 bucks, and I, I asked her if she'd take 10 for it since I was buying all that other stuff, and she said, sure. So I thought that was pretty cool, and then I saw this, and I thought I'd try my luck on this. I didn't get any of these during the... Uh, during the promo, um, Walking Dead Day, but issue 27, this might be the one that I want, which would be the one with the uh, governor's eyeball, so we're going to see if we got that one or not. I don't know. You guys tell me, is it the one I wanted? No, it is not. Oh, darn. Okay. That's still pretty cool. You know, a little black and white cover. I have no idea which one of these are rare and which one of these are not rare. Um, I have no idea about any of them. I really didn't uh, look too much into it. I really wanted the eyeball popping out, but hey, that's pretty cool. I, I don't collect the comics, I collect the trade paperbacks, and I think I'm up to 28, and they're up to 30, so uh, it's uh, it would be pretty cool to read this anyway, because I probably haven't read this in about five or six years. Anyway, that's the last one I got. Um, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but it would have been cool to get that one. I saw, I saw that in some people's feed the day after they came out, and that was, that was pretty fun. So there you have it, folks. Um, Good to be back at it doing videos. I know it's been a while, and uh, hopefully I'll get some more content out. I'm heading out to Spokane this weekend, or this week, uh, going to a little conference, taking some students to a competition. That's pretty cool. And uh, I will be around, and see you all soon. Take care, guys. Thank you.